Right, I'm delighted to be joined by Declan Kenner, ahead of an absolutely massive card. Cage Legacy, 22, in Liverpool. I think we're all looking forward to it. Before we get onto the card itself, I want to delve a little bit into your background. I've been doing my research. Yeah. First things first, you took on an opponent on an undercard of Floyd Mayweather. So tell me all about that experience. I had a, I had a feeling you were going to ask me about that straight <laughs> away. Uh, yeah, no, I have so throughout my whole life I've been involved in like martial arts, kickboxing, junior age and then senior and then I got into the boxing, I started doing a couple of boxing fights, I got back on, I built a bit of a reputation and stuff and then I, I was pounding them over to let me be on that card, I was like I want to be on that, as soon as the scene had been announced it was Carl Prince and James and they were like ah oh, stop, you won't be on any cards full, stop, stop, stop but I was ever so persistent and I kept it going and then I got the phone call a week before the show saying, look, a guy is out if you want to jump in. I was like, who is it again? And they were like, Johan Ingram. And I didn't know that, so I just checked them up straight away. I was like, Johan Ingram, YouTube, he's knocking out Raul Ramiro and all. I was like, do you know what? I'll never get an opportunity like this again. I was like, go for it. Get in there. And I done it, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Like, I'm not going to lie. Even though I didn't get to win, but he didn't knock me out or that. He's known for knocking people out, like, and making highlight real finishes out of people. I went the distance with him, and, yeah, it was a night I'll, I'll never forget. I can imagine it must be an absolutely incredible experience being around those shows. And I wanted to ask, did you get any opportunities to speak with Floyd? In, yeah, he wouldn't really talk much. I, I seen him, so we were in the set. Uh, Floyd and Johan were in the same change room. I was in Aaron Chalmers' change room. So we had like Mike Conlin, me, Aaron Chalmers, all on one side. But then after it, it wasn't like sitting down and go out with them or anything like that. They kind of done their own thing. But we got to see them and say hello. And they said thanks for being part of the event and stuff. But it's like, uh, I don't know how to explain it with Floyd Mayo. It's like a whole, like, I, I, I never am one to put anybody on a, on a pedestal. And, but like it was Mayweather. Do you get me? So like even as you said, being in the same being in the same room as him, looking at you know what I mean, getting these feelings and like he had an entourage with him of like bro, it was crazy. We could we could talk for a whole day just about <laughs> that stuff. And I can imagine being within his presence, being within the show at the O2 yeah. Arena. Did you soak anything up within the promotional side that you thought, this is great, I want to apply this now to Cage Legacy? Yeah, so that's exactly what happened. That actually happened since day one. So we, we, I had my own MMA gym. My little brother and I was training. We were going to all the local events. We were like, these are in community halls. They've no lights. They've no production. We were like, we can do this. We start doing it. Cage Legacy came about. But as you said, everywhere I've gone or I've been a part of an experience, I've learned stuff like, you know, like uh, the extra media backstage, the setups of the event the promotion they do, the way they run social media. So, so yeah, it has helped me an awful lot. Like. I can imagine as well with you, somebody who's a bit of a natural showman. I've seen you at the Kingpin shows wearing your outrageous suits. I thought it was spectacular. I've got to be honest with you. But Thank you, you're bro. Not, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. But now when you're looking for fighters, are you looking for people who can be showman, who can stand out? Yeah, so no disrespect to like any fighter and any man that gets in a ring or a cage or any form of combat like credit to them but there's like it, it's even the way it works in the UFC at the highest level if you have if you're a half good fighter and you have a good mouth you'll get in the same place as this guy who's boosting up Alex the and saying and I know it's horrible and it's probably not fair on these guys but like this way some guys get a manager or some guys get a bit of a voice behind them it's a bit like the wrestling many years ago isn't it you can be a good fighter but you need to have that bit of talk you know what I mean Absolutely. And now it looks like you've put together a pretty epic card. I'm very excited for it. The main event, Lee Chadwick. I've seen him fight before. He's an absolute warrior. Talk to me about and his fight. So Lee Chadwick is taking on Moikon Kobayashi. He's a Brazilian. He's a, a Brazilian fighter. He's coming for the win. He told me since the first day, he says, I am, I'm not coming here to make up numbers. I'm coming here to finish Lee. And Lee is the same. Lee is like, I'm coming to put on a show in the main event. Like, this is going to be like a homecoming fight for me after having so many fights. So, like, that's the reason that one's the main event. It was originally the Paul Kelly and John Redmond fight, but that fell through. But now I think it's it's, it's a massive fight. Lee Chadwick against Moy Khan in Liverpool is a massive fight, and I really can't wait for it because you have, like, a striker, the Brazilian striker, and then you have the grappler or wrestler, you know what I mean? So, what they say, styles make fights. And looking at the rest of the bill, we've got Chris Fishgold, somebody who's been in the UFC 
who's fought at the highest level. You must be buzzing to have him on this card. Buzzing. And he, I, someone was just calling me the other day, and they were like, Chris Fishgold, and he was a former world champ. And I was like, yeah, and Lee Chadwick was a former world champ. And I was like, oh, yeah. So, like, even, like, the the main event, call main event alone without the other card, like, has, like, a uh, high level, high, high level, like, UFC... Uh, I know Lee Chadwick wasn't in the UFC yet, but he was on every other promotion and he's been fighting the best fighters in the world, basically. Without a doubt. And then we go to the co-main event, which is Fishgold, and he has been in the UFC at the highest level. Like, even his record, the people he fought, it's amazing. Like. It's amazing to be an MMA fan in Liverpool or to be an MMA fan at this moment in time. Let's look at the location of this card. You've obviously put on some great bills in Ireland. Doing that trip to England for the first ever time, so a great opportunity for English fans to experience what Cage Legacy is all about. But when you yeah. look at Liverpool in particular, it's got such an Irish heritage. Is that why you picked Liverpool? Yeah, so we went to Liverpool, we went to Manchester and we went to London when we were originally researching and looking for places to go. And uh, I don't like I don't know disrespect to Manchester or London. <laughs> we love it. We love everybody. We will be coming there. But Liverpool felt like when we were there, we were like, this is the place. This is where we want to do this event. You know what I mean? It felt like, as you said, a little bit like home. You know what I mean? And we were like, right, if we're coming to England, we'll do Liverpool fourth and then Manchester will be next. So Manchester is coming up. Is that something we're going to get? Manchester will be coming up and it will be before the end of this year. It will be announced. And it will be announced soon. It will happen before the end of this year. Well, that's amazing. It'd be great to have a card near Manchester, somewhere where I'm very close to. There's so many amazing bills there, so it'd be great to have another one Lovely. in England. But rolling back the years a little bit, can you tell me a little bit about what were you like growing up, some of your favourite memories, and what eventually led you down the path of martial arts? Yeah, this is actually a story I, I tell a lot. So like, And it's actually, like when I bring out a book, I'm, I'm going to bring out a book and stuff like that. And it, like 100%, I'm going to bring out a book and, and my story because... Well, I started doing martial arts when I was a young age, and where I'm from in Dublin and, and Pallet, like, it's a rough area, and, like, there's not a lot. There's, like, street crime, and you can easily get led down the wrong roads with doing the wrong stuff. So I, I have even shown myself and proven. I was, like, 19, 18, started messing, acting the bollocks, got back into the MMA when I was 26, and the main reason was I went to a UFC card in Dublin. It was Conor McGregor against Diego Brandao. I was there with my, my late friend. He's actually passed away now. Joey, myself and Joey were there. We were watching the fights. We were drinking. We were having a bit of a buzz. And I seen Paddy Houlihan in the cage. And I was like, me and Paddy used to go to school together in my estate. And I was like, I fucking know him. And my mate was like, shut up you. Don't say anything to him. He's a UFC player. I was like, that's my mate, man. I was like, Paddy, come here. And when I called Paddy out, he was like, ah. Oh, I was obviously drinking and all. And he was like, like, I, I used to look up, when we were, when you were younger, you used to do kickboxing and untell them, Paddy, I'm looking up to you and I was like, you can do this. Like, where this, you know what I mean? You can do this if you want. Next day, I woke up and thought, I was like, that is it. It is game over. I went to the local MMA gym. I started training myself. I already had all the striking background. And I got into MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with Wayne Fagan. And since it happened, my, like, I would highly recommend it for anybody. If they don't know, if they're at a path in life where they're stuck, they don't know what to do. Join your local MMA gym or, or anything for that and just put your heart and soul into it and it will pay off. Like, keep going, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because I got sidetracked for a little while when I was a teenager and I'm so glad that I didn't take... It was like 25 when I started training again. I'm 45 now, so for the last 10 years I've been grafting. <laughs> I'm glad that you've gone on this road and it's led to you putting on this fantastic card in Liverpool that I'm really looking yep. forward to. But before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like to speak about? Yep. I would just like to say thank you so much to everybody in Ireland, England, all across the world, whoever support Cage Legacy, whoever bought a pay-per-view. Without the fans, without the media like yourself, without the help of all these people, none of it will be possible. Liverpool on May 17th is our biggest MMA show to date. We have had massive shows in Ireland with massive names who went on to the UFC. This Liverpool card is going to be insane on May 17th. Make sure you are in Liverpool at the Grand Central Dome. Tickets are flying out. They're going really, really quick. They're actually going quicker than what I thought they were going to go. And we don't want to say to everyone, look, sorry, this place is sold out. You can only buy the pay-per-view. So make sure you get your ticket quick. We have, like, e even the names that we have under the main event on the call. We have Chris String we have Chris Stringer fighting on the car. Chris Fishgold. Lee Chadwick. We have Connor. Connor Patterson. 
We have Mario Dittifano, we have Pro Debuts, Max Lally, Richie Smullen. Like, this is bigger, and you can quote me on this, than all them BAM and Bellator cards that were going around that were in the Tree Arena and that were in the, the BEC and in Newcastle and all. This is a bigger card. Just because it's on cards, like, see, this is 12 professional fights. Like, you, you even have a look there, like, no disrespect, as I'm saying, but like, you have a look at Cage Warriors or Bellator or any of them. Nine, ten, ten pro fights. So we're up there now, and we're aiming to go for that. We're at the locking in a deal with a new TV crew that we're, we're going to announce in the next coming days. So our production and all that's going to look totally different. We're, we're trying to up it. Like, we're upping the fight card. We're going to up the production. And we're going all in for this. 